We reached out to the El Paso Community Foundation. We have Eric Pearson on the phone with us, the CEO and president. Can you tell us a little bit about your foundation? So we are a community foundation. Uh, you guys have the Albuquerque Community Foundation, Randy Royster there. Uh, what we do is we try to, uh, you know, help the community in, in all directions. Uh, we manage about $140 million in an endowment and we make grants to nonprofits and we try to engage in leadership and we try to really listen to the community and respond to the best of our ability. So right now you're collecting money for El Paso. What is going to happen with that money? What is it going to provide? So we're really trying to, we, we actually don't have a full plan. Our, our, you know, we get into action and it's a Saturday and then Sunday. And so my next meeting in about half an hour is going to be talking about how exactly we're going to uh, activate this money. But our, our thought is we're, we're trying to help the, the victims of the shooting. Um, so that's our first group of people. There are people who have to deal with funeral expenses, you know, with caring for their family, with trying to cope uh, with, you know, all of the distractions of the news media and all these things. It's going to be very difficult for them to just even have a moment to breathe and to grieve. Um, so that's our first set. The next one, we're really talking about the people who were in the store. You know, there were up to 3,000 people in the store, according to police. And and although not all of them experienced physical trauma, there were a lot of people that you know, were in a traumatic situation, and we want to help them heal. And then our third goal and our third priority here is to think about law enforcement and the folks that, that might have you know, some vicarious trauma from having to deal with that situation. What they all saw in that store was an act of war, an act of war against our country by a terrorist. And you can't get over that tomorrow. And so although we are the same community that we were three days ago and we're trying to, to cope, we all need to come together and figure out how to support the people who had to deal with this directly. I think a lot of people waking up this morning all across the country thinking, how can I help? There's not a, a perfect answer to that question, but I mean, this is one way to get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. There's no real formula because human beings are unique and we're just trying to deal directly with human beings who have, uh, you know, I don't know what they're going through right now and, and my heart goes out to them. You know, the idea of losing a child or losing a parent or a loved one in such a an instant and heinous way uh, just is unfathomable to me. I'm lucky to have not been a part of that, but I do really, really feel for the families and, and the people who had to be here and witness this. Um, it, it's just horrible. And, and I tell you what, everybody in the community is, uh, it's, it's beautiful the way we've come around to try to, to heal, but we need, this is a long process and we need to really figure out how, to make sure that these families that, that witness this and who are involved and our community as a whole can think about how to move forward and uh, turn this into something that brings our community together. So if people want to donate, what do they need to do? Where do they need to go? Uh, easiest way is to go to epcf.org. That stands for El Paso Community Foundation. So epcf.org slash victims. And I'll tell you what, um, that those dark acts have not overshadowed the light. Uh, we have seen so many people from so many places uh, with such compassionate responses that it, it does give you hope in, in, in a crazy way. Um, it's a terrible reason for us to show compassion. We should do it every day. But it, it's nice to know that there are people out there who care. And so thank you all for doing what you're doing.